good morning this is uh, p venkata mahesh assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering inst of aeronautical engineering uh, today we will discuss uh, one topic called models of flow and we'll see how what is substantial derivative also and this topic uh, comes under uh, uh, the main broad topic of uh, uh, governing equations for cfd so the governing equations of cfd if you see why we have to uh, derive the governing of equations of cfd because these equations speak the physics of the flow physics of the flow if you see the the physics is mass is conserved and the equation which is representing it is continuity equation the another one another physics is newton's second law of, and the equation that is governing is the momentum equation and the third physics law of physics is energy is conserved energy is conserved means energy cannot be created nor be destroyed it can be converted into one form to another form so the uh, this is a govern uh, this is giving the governing equation which is called the energy equations so these three energy equation and these three governing equations the continuity equation momentum equation and energy equation these are based on these physical laws mass is conserved newton's second law and energy is conserved now what we have to do is we have to derive these uh, uh, equations and so that while we deal with the cfd uh, problems we know uh, the physical meaning of uh, the equations and uh, uh, what is happening inside it now before going to derivations we need to know one thing called conservation form of equation now what is conservation form of equation and what is non conservation form of equation so in partial differentiation term say this uh, uh, divergence term divergence means del dot say suppose if i write del dot v or del dot rho v uh, as it is written here so this uh, del dot v this is a vector and this is a vector form of partial differentiation uh, partial differential term now the dot product of this two is called the divergence term now if our equation is having a divergence term on the left hand side then the equation is called conservation form or conservative form okay if that is not there then it is called non conservative form now uh, we'll see uh, there is something called models of the flow what do you mean by models of the flow why we have to study say suppose uh, this is a solid pen i can catch hold of it and i can see uh, how where this uh, pen is moving but uh, i cannot catch hold of the air so the air is moving air is gone no i cannot catch the uh, air and uh, see what is happening uh, with the air so air or any fluid water or anything we can i cannot catch hold of it grab it grab it so that is why what we have to do we have to uh, frame some models of flow to analyze the motion i mean the analyze the flow flowing uh, uh, fl fluid or liquid or gas fluid in the sense it is a broad classification of liquids and gases now when we are analyzing this uh, fluids what we have to do we have to uh, assume some models of flow then only we can uh, analyze this uh, flow what is happening to the flow parameters like pressure velocity temperature uh, visco uh, viscosity all those properties of this fluids we can only analyze when we consider these models of flow okay now here the solid if you see if the solid is moving so we can clearly say that at this point this point every point on the solid is moving with the same velocity but if you take a liquid or if you take a gas what happens is that there is a chance for each of the different particles in of the fluid move with a different uh, velocity and having a different uh, pressure all those things based on the circumstances so that is uh, one important thing we have to keep in mind 
Now coming to models of flow, the finite control volume and infinitesimal fluid element. These are the two broad uh, classifications of these models of flow. And in this uh, we have, so first we will see the finite control volume. So in this we have two types. One is control volume fixed and fluid is moving through it. The other one is control volume is moving along with the fluid. Now what do you mean by control volume? Control volume means it is a closed volume imagined to draw within the finite region of flow. Okay. So what we are doing is we are uh, assuming that uh, as we are imagining that uh, there is a volume. Okay. And which is uh, surrounded by this control surface. Volume means it should have some surface and inside that surface there is a uh, the volume. Now this is an imaginary thing. Because uh, it is not, I mean, uh, what we are doing is we are uh, de dealing with fluids and uh, here uh, we are imagining that there is a control volume and we are analyzing the fluid passing through the control volume, which fluid is entering and fluid is leaving and what is happening while entering, what is happening while leaving, that uh, we are going to analyze. So the first uh, method is finite control volume, okay. So in finite control volume, as I said, we have two ways we deal with this uh, finite control volume. One is we are keeping the finite control volume fixed. Okay. So uh, we are assuming that this is the control volume and we are keeping our camera like that and we are seeing uh, the fluid is uh, flowing through the uh, control volume. The other one is uh, we are assuming that uh, the control volume is uh, moving. So the there is no fluid entering and uh, leaving the control volume. Only thing is based on the place and circumstances, the density, the pressure, the volume of the control volume is changing. So what we have to do in the second uh, aspect is we have to run uh, along with the control volume, where it is going, where it is going. So this is a little difficult uh, thing and this is uh, generally approached in, uh, used in this uh, experimental analysis. This one. Uh, can be used in CFD technique because uh, in CFD we are not, uh, uh, I mean we, we can take our uh, observation to any part of the fluid because we are uh, inside the, I mean uh, we have control over the fluid uh, when the software. Now what is control volume, I mean how it should be? The control volume it should be a reasonably large finite region of the flow. What do you mean by reasonably large finite region of the flow? So the meaning is at any given point there should be some particles inside the volume, control volume. Say suppose if I take the control volume of the order of the one uh, uh, particle of the fluid, what happens is the particles are loosely packed and uh, there is a chance of uh, uh, the control volume become uh, empty. So the control volume size should be reasonably big so that at every any particular uh, time there are some finite elements inside the control volume. So that is one consideration we need to observe. Now why we have to uh, see the finite control volume means instead of focusing on the entire uh, fluid Okay, what we are doing is we are, for, we are uh, keeping our attention restricted to the control volume. Okay, so here it is written the control volume is fixed and control volume is moving. Now the control volume is fixed in space. What is happening? The fluid is entering and the fluid is leaving. So there is a chance of variation of the mass depending on the velocity with which it is entering and leaving. If the velocity of entering and leaving is different, what happens is the mass of the control volume will change. But if we consider this one, the control volume is moving with the fluid. There is no fluid which is entering and leaving the control volume. So in this case, what is happening is the mass of the control volume is fixed all the time. Okay, same particles will be always in the control volume. That means the mass of the control volume is fixed. Now the fundamental physics, physical laws or physical principles 
like the uh, mass of mass is conserved, energy is conserved, Newton's law. These physical laws are applied to the fluid crossing the control volume. In case of the control volume fixed, okay, when the control volume is fixed, what we are doing? We are applying the principles to fluid crossing the control volume. When the control volume is moving with the fluid, we apply the physical laws to the fluid inside the control volume. Okay, so this is very important where we are applying the fundamental physical laws. So, if the control volume is fixed, we are applying the physical laws to the fluid which is crossing the control surface. That means the fluid which is entering and fluid which is, uh, which is uh, leaving. When the control volume is moving with the fluid, what we are doing? We are applying the physical laws to the fluid inside the control volume because there is no exchange of fluid with the surroundings. So, the control volume, whatever fluid is inside the control volume, to that we are applying the physical laws. Now, what form of equations we will get will, when we apply the finite control volume method? We apply, we get uh, integral form. Okay. The equations, the continuity equation, momentum equation, energy equation, whatever equation we are going to derive, we will get them in the form of integral. Okay, integral, integral uh, rho v like that. Okay, so like this, uh, we will see the integral form. Now, these integral forms, what we have to do, we can manipulate and uh, make it into do rho by do t like that. Okay, so directly we will get integral form and by some modifications or manipulations, we will get in partial differential equation forms. Finally, we need for partial differential equation form. So, we do not get the partial differential e equation forms in this approach. What is this approach? The finite control volume approach. In finite control volume approach, we get the equations in the form of integrals and we have to manipulate them so that we apply obtain the finite, I mean the partial differentiation forms. Okay. The equation so obtained from the finite control volume fixed in space. Okay. They are conservation form of equations. So, what do you mean by conservation form? We have a divergence term del dot rho v like this we will have on the left hand side. So, if I apply the control volume fixed in space, we get a conservation form of equation. If I apply the control volume moving with the space, okay, moving in the fluid with this, moving, moving in the space with the fluid, then we get a, a non-conservation form of equation. So, we do not have this uh, del uh, dot rho v. But what we have to do, again we have to manipulate and uh, we have to uh, obtain, we have to convert this non-conservation form to the conservation form. Okay, we have to manipulate this conservation form to non-conservation form. Sorry, non-conservation form to conservation form. That is uh, uh, why we have to use conservation form means uh, the conservation form of equations will have uh, the all, if I, uh, I mean convert all the con equations into conservation form, I have this uh, del dot uh, some physical thing on one side and the other terms will be on the other side. So, I can manipulate all these equations. Uh, Say suppose uh, do g by do g by do x do f by do y do uh, h by do z like that I can write in similar form all the con uh, all the equations I can write in a similar form and if I write these equations in similar form what happens is uh, my mathematical logic for this programming will be simplified so that is why we need all the equations in the conservation form. Okay, so be it uh, the partial differential, I mean the uh, integral form. The first disadvantage of the kind of finite control volume is we will get in integral form and again we have to manipulate into the partial differentiation form. 
so the second one is if i use this uh, uh, fixed i mean sorry moving with the fluid if the uh, control volume is moving with the fluid what happens is again i have to co convert this non conservation form to conservation form so these are the uh, mean uh, pros and cons of this uh, finite control volume now the second model of uh, fluid uh, flow is infinitely small element fluid element infinitely small fluid element so we are assuming that this is having a cartesian form means a cartesian or cylindrical form of a volume we will consider that is a dv and this is in the sense of differentiation differential calculus it is infinitely small okay if in the sense of differential calculus it is infinitely small but it should be large enough to carry some number of molecules so that at a, uh, it can be treated as a continuum okay it is can it uh, continuum or continuous medium okay if it is a too small only one element one uh, uh, this molecule is there inside this then it cannot be treated as a continuum or continuous medium but if i if i have number of molecules inside the control and inside this fluid element then it can be treated as a continuum or continuous medium so again in this case of uh, infinitely small fluid element we have two cases one is the fixed in space here the control volume is the sorry the infinitely small fluid element is fixed and the fluid is crossing the boundaries from this side this side all these three sides it can cross but if i see the the other case the con, the uh, finite infinitely small fluid element is moving along the streamline okay now what is this it the volume the this small dv volume uh, infinitely small element is moving with the fluid so if, when it is moving with the fluid the velocity we can have as the velocity we can get by drawing a tangent at the streamline okay this is the streamline and at the what do you mean by streamline says about at this point what is the direction of velocity if i draw a tangent i will get now at this point what is the velocity of the tan uh, velocity direction of the velocity if i draw a tangent i will get the uh, direction of the velocity there so at each point the tangent will give the direction of the velocity and now the velocity of the entire volume i mean entire uh, volume dv will be the velocity at that point that is what uh, is uh, said here okay so what are the two things the infinite infinitesimal fluid element is fixed in space and the fluid is moving inside i mean going inside and going outside of the fluid element the other one is the fluid element is moving with the fluid and the same fluid particles are remaining inside the fluid element so these are the two cases now where we apply the physical laws so the if i consider the fixed fluid element i will apply the physical laws to the fluid crossing the fluid element okay when what the fluid is coming inside and going outside i will apply the physical laws to the fluid crossing the boundary or the uh, the surface okay this this is one surface this is another surface this is one surface like that we have three surface on the other side so this surface as the fluid is crossing and the uh, physical laws are applied to this uh, fluid which is crossing the element now if i take the control volume i mean uh, the fluid element which is moving what we'll do we we'll apply the physical laws or physical principles to the fluid which is inside the element now here the equations the governing equations that we get the continuity equation or momentum equation or energy equation when i apply the infinitesimal small fluid element infinitely small fluid element 
this kind of approach if I apply directly I will get the partial differential equations. So this is the advantage of the, uh, the fluid element in, in a small fluid element concept over the finite control volume approach. So in finite control volume approach what we are getting we are getting the integral form and we, are, we have to manipulate into the differential form. But here in the case of in infinitely small fluid element what we are getting is we are getting all the equations in the form of partial differential equations. So that is the advantage of this infinite infinitesimal fluid element. Now whether we will get a conservation form or non-conservation form of equations. It is similar to the uh, the fluid uh, sorry finite control volume approach if the element is fixed if the element is fixed we get the conservation form if the element is moving we get the non-conservation form so out of the all four models this model is uh, giving directly conservation form as well as the partial differentiation form now if i take this one i will get a non-conservation form Again, I have to manipulate and I have to get the conservation form. So, this one is uh, uh, easy to get the uh, equations which is suitable for our CFD analysis. So, this is about the models of flow. Now, we will see what do you mean by a substantial derivative. Okay. So, consider a fluid element okay infinite infinitesimally small fluid element or infinitely small fluid element it is at point 0.1 at time t1 and it is at point 0.2 at time t2 okay now what is the velocity of this fluid so the generalized equation of the velocity of the fluid is like this v bar is equal to u i bar plus v j bar plus w k bar. So, this is the vector Cartesian form of uh, uh, the velocity u i, uh, I, I j k form u v w in x direction, y direction, z direction the velocity components are u v w and the vector form is v bar is equal to u i bar plus v j bar plus w k bar where i j k are unit vectors in x y z directions okay now the uh, these equation these velocities u v w okay these velocities u v w are the functions of x y z and t so what do you mean by the, they are functions of x y z and t this velocity u okay this velocity u can change in this direction or in this direction or in this direction or with time okay the velocity the, uh, the value of this uh, u the x direction velocity it can change in x direction y direction z direction as well as with the time similarly the velocity v and w are also functions of x y z and t so this is the uh, first first point. What is the first point? We are considering infinitely small fluid element which is at a point t1 and it, after uh, after some time it is at point 2 and uh, the time is a t2. Now the velocity of the fluid particle the generalized form is v bar is equal to u i bar plus v j bar plus w k bar. Now this u uh, v w r functions of x, y, z and t. So, this is the, the first point. Now, we have the density term. Any fluid if you take the density will change or it may change if say suppose this room is there. Okay. There is no pressure difference at all points. They all at all points the pressure is same. Okay, so the density of the fluid is constant toward the uh, toward this uh, room. Say suppose this uh, a fluid is coming from here and leaving here. The area is decreasing. So what is happening? There is a chance of the density change. Okay. Now 
the density is a scalar function okay the velocity is vector function the density is a scalar function but the density is uh, the same as the uh, it is a, a function of x y z and t u v w are functions of x y z and t as well, same is the case with the density the density is also a function of x y z and t now if rho is the generalized form now at point 1 at time t1 what is the density of the fluid it is a rho 1 rho 1 is the density of the fluid and rho 1 is equal to x y z x1 y1 z1 t1 so what are these things rho 1 is at x1 at y1 at z1 at t1 these are all fixed quantities when x1 y1 z1 t1 are there then the density is termed as rho 1 so this is a at point 1 now after a time uh, t2 at a time t2 the fluid element is at point 2 now what is the density now the x y z are under time they are changing now the x value is x2 y value is y2 z value is z2 and t value is t2 now in this case the density is a term as rho 2 okay at this point the density is rho 1 at this point is uh, density is rho 2 now now this is a uh, something about mathematics you can see here the rho is function of x y z and t okay now the function can be expressed in power series what do you mean by power series power series is uh, like this c0 plus c1 x Uh, plus c2 x square plus c3 x cube like that it will go. So, a uh, what we are doing is with respect to point one. So x1 y1 z1. So if I write in the with respect to x1, what I have to write? I have to write rho is equal to c1 c naught plus if I have only x, I am writing what is the the equation so c1 into x minus x1 plus c2 into x minus x1 whole square plus c3 into x minus x3 whole uh, sorry x1 whole cube so like this uh, it will go up to infinity so that is the power series now why we are writing the power series that is a uh, in order to get the taylor series okay we are, what we are doing is we have to obtain these constants what are these values of these constants and we, we have to uh, express the density in the form of a taylor series okay now here square terms are there and they are called the higher order terms okay the square terms cube terms power four terms phi terms they are called the higher order terms now for our case here we need only x power 1 that is sufficient for us so the remaining terms are uh, termed as the higher order terms so uh, we are going to neglect them so we are not uh, considering them now what uh, we, how to get the taylor series for getting taylor series what we have to do we have to differentiate this with respect to x okay and substitute x equal to x1 okay if it, what we have to do we have to differentiate this with respect to x and substitute x equal to x1 so what i will get there if i differentiate this what will happen i will get c1 what is c1 c1 is equal to rho do by uh, do rho by do x if i put like this all the others are constants only x we are partially differentiating with respect to x so the y z t terms are treated as constants so in that case this will be zero and this will be zero this will be zero this will be zero so what will re will remain with is c1 into here this is constant this is zero only x will be there now uh, c1 
is coming as do by do rho by do x at x equal to 1. So I can write this as in place of c1 I can put do rho by do x. Okay. Now we will see by, by doing uh, three times we will get the clarity of uh, what is this. Okay. Now for getting what is that c2. Okay. First we will see what is a c0. c0 how to get there is no x y z term. So what we have to do if I simply substitute here the x1 y1 z1 t1. So this is a row 1. This is row 1. This one is c0. This one if I put x equal to x1 this will be 0. If I put y equal to y1 this is 0. If I put z equal to z1 this is 0. If I put t1 t equal to t1 this is 0. So all the other terms will be 0. Now this c0 can be written as row 1 that is written here. Now the second uh, the third constant c2 we have to see we will see what is uh, c2. Now c2 how to get c2 here if I differentiate this row with respect to y here the variable is y now we are differentiating partially this equation with respect to y. So it is a uh, row dou row by dou y. Okay, if I am differentiating this uh, entire equation with do, uh, with respect to y, so this is constant, so this is 0, this is constant 0, this is 0, this is 0. Now what we are remaining here, we are remaining with uh, c2 here. Okay, the differentiation of y with respect to y is 1, so we are remaining with uh, c2. And uh, what we are substituting here, we are substituting the x1, y1, z1, t1. So this is a uh, partial differentiation of rho uh, with respect to y at y at point 1. Okay, we are uh, differentiating with respect to point 1. So, I am getting this equation. Now, so c2 is a dou rho by dou y of 1. Similarly, so if I want the value of this c3, Okay, we, are, we, are, we want the value of C3. This C3 is constant and we need the value of uh, this constant. So, how, what I have to do? I, I have to derive the entire equation dou rho by dou z. So, this entire equation is uh, differentiated with respect to z. So, if I am differentiating partially with respect to z, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0 and this is uh, 0. And this one will be only C3. Now, C3 is equal to dou rho by dou z at point 1. So that is written here. Now similarly, if I want the constant c4, what I have to do? I have to partially differentiate this entire equation with respect to time. So if I differentiate partially with an entire equation with respect to time, what I will get? dou rho by dou t I will get. So the, all the other terms uh, the the other all other terms will be 0 and this one will be c4 c4 is equal to dou rho by dou t at point 1 so that is the Taylor's expansion so the in the same way you can get the constant for all the higher order terms but here we don't need the higher order terms we are just writing the higher order terms so this is about the the Taylor series what do you mean by Taylor series here this uh, this is power series we are expressing the density the function as a power series and we are differentiation uh, we are differentiating it partially with uh, different uh, uh, variables here x y z t separately and we are obtaining the constant c0 c1 c2 c3 4 c4 respectively and when we substitute all these constants in this function this function is called the tyler series okay now what we are doing Previously, we have x1, x, y, z, t, x, y, z, t like this here. Now, what we are doing is, we are substituting this point t2. Okay, we are substituting point t2 on, in all these things. So, it is x2, y, y2, z2, t2 like this if I put. This is x2, y2, z2, t2. So, what, help, what happens? This will become row 2 and this is x2, y2, z2, t2. So this is what is written here. So it is row 2 equal to row 1 plus 
dou rho by dou y x into x2 minus x1, dou rho by dou y into y2 minus y1, dou rho by dou z into z2 minus z1, dou rho by dou t into t2 minus t1. Okay, and plus higher order terms. Now what we are doing, we are neglecting the higher order terms. Okay, for our case, for simplifying the problem, we are neglecting the higher order terms. So if I neglect the higher order terms and bring this row to row on this side, what it will become row 2 minus row 1 and uh, dou, by, dou rho by dou, uh, dou x into x2 minus x1, dou rho by dou y into y2 minus y1, dou rho by dou z into z2 minus z1, dou rho by dou, dou t into t2 minus t1. What we have to do next? We have to divide this entire equation with respect with t2 minus t1. So the entire equation we are dividing with t2 minus t1. What we will get? We will get row 2 minus row 1 by t2 minus t1 and dou rho by dou x into x2 minus x1 by t2 minus t1, dou rho by dou y into y2 minus y1 by t2 minus t1, dou rho by dou z into z2 minus z1 by t2 minus t1 and here the numerator and denominator both are t2 minus t1 so we are remaining with only dou rho by dou t. Okay. So this is the equation we, are, we got finally. Now here we have some terms here. These terms, if I apply the limits, okay, if I apply that, now what is the limit when t2 tends to t1, okay, when t2 tends to t1, t2 tends to t1 means t2 minus t1 tends to 0, okay, the different, the denominator will have limits, limit delta t tends to 0, limit delta x tends to 0 like that we have written many times the same thing we are writing here but in the textbook if you see what they will write is when limit t2 tends to t1 okay in the Anderson textbook if you see they have written limit t2 minus t2 tends to t1 so what is the meaning of that it is uh, nothing but t2 minus t1 tends to 0 okay so if I put limit and you can put like this also delta t tends to 0 okay limit delta tends t delta t tends to 0 what is happening to this one limit delta t tends to 0 what is happening to this one limit delta tends to 0 what is happening to this one limit delta t tends to 0 what is happening to this one <laughs> that we have to see now when i apply the limits here what is what is the first one limit delta t tends to 0 delta x by delta t. So this is the meaning of this. x2 minus x1 is delta x, t2 minus t1 is delta t. So this is, if you remember your uh, high school mathematics, this uh, this is termed as velocity in x direction. Now limit delta t tends to 0, delta y by delta t, this will be equal to v, small v velocity in y direction. Similarly, it is uh, velocity in z direction. Now here, these are all the total derivatives. Okay. Here we are speaking about the partial derivatives. Now here, when I apply the limit tends to 0, what we are getting is the total derivative with respect to, uh, with respect x total derivative of x with respect to time that is equal to u, the total derivative of y with respect to a, a time it is v and the total derivative of w with respect to time it is sorry uh, z with respect to time it is w and the total derivative of the density with respect to time. Okay. So what we are getting is here we are by applying limits or we are getting all the total derivatives. Now here we have partial derivatives and here we are getting the total derivatives. Now if I substitute these values here, what will happen? Now if I substitute all these values here, this is d rho by dt, this is u, so u into dou rho by dou x, this is v, this is v into dou rho by dou y and w uh, into dou rho by dou z and this is uh, dou rho by dou t. Now why we removed uh, this one here because 
the t1 is a tending to so t2 is tending to t1 okay when we are uh, taking t2 very close to t1 what is happening this is the equation okay when we are taking the t2 very close to t1 then this is the total derivative equation now this is uh, generally the mathematicians will write d rho by dt and the engineers are writing d rho by dt okay the mathematicians they will write this as the total derivative and the engineers will write d rho by dt like this substantial derivative okay now this is the uh, substantial derivative the substantial derivative is nothing but the total derivative of a rho here now e this is having the two terms here this is velocity 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 and do by do x do by do y do by do z now what i can write here is this del the del is the vector notation the del is the vector notation of the partial differentiation okay the del is vector notation of partial differentiation and we have v bar as u i bar plus v j bar plus w k bar okay so this is the vector notation for velocity and this is the vector notation for the partial differentiation if i have a dot product between these two what i will get v bar dot v bar dot del okay the partial differentiation is v bar dot del so if uh, partial differentiation I mean the uh, dot product the like terms i into i will be 1 so i will get u into do by do x j into j this also will be 1 i will get v into do by do y and this k into k this is a dot product is 1 again i will get w into do by do by do z okay this is the dot product of del dot i'm uh, sorry v dot del okay this uh, we'll see what is this and what is this and what is this now is it clear uh, how to get this del dot v dot del v bar dot del it is not del dot v we have to remember it is a v dot del why we are getting why we are using v dot del here here it is a u into do rho by do x v into do rho by do y w into do by do rho by do z the here do rho by do t so this equation if i consider this how can i write this it is a d rho by dt is equal to this do rho by do t we are not changing here what we are writing it is v bar dot del rho so the partial differentiation of rho here with respect to x y z dot product with the vector velocity vector and this is the equation here okay this equation can be written like this now each of these three terms are having some meaning what is the meaning this is the substantial derivative so say the substantial derivative is the time rate of change of a moving fluid element okay it is time rate of change of the moving fluid element so what do you mean by that at one at time t1 and at time t2 there is a the particle is at different different points now with respect to that what is the change in the physical property like density so previously we have seen do rho by do t plus uh, sorry it is uh, d rho by do t is equal to do rho by do t plus v bar dot del rho so this is the equation what we got previously now the change in density with respect to time so this is a uh, from time to time each time the particle is at a different 
position and the total change with respect to time and space is called the substantial derivative okay now what is the local derivative local derivative means at point t1 i mean at point 1 and at point 2 if the particle is at point 1 and there is a change with respect to time then it is called the local derivative if the point is at point 2 sorry if the particle is at point 2 and there is a change then it is also the local derivative so the do rho by do t is at a given point with respect to time is there any change so that is given by the do rho by do t with respect to time what is happening with for the fluid so that is given by the d rho by dt and what about this uh, v dot del here you can write here as a v bar v bar dot del now what it is uh, giving is because of the change of position okay the point at point at time t1 at point it is at t1 p1 and at t2 it is at p2 so the point is changing the place it is changing with respect to time now because of the change in position or the change in location of the fluid what is the variation in the property so that is given by the convective derivative so these are the three things one is with respect to to time what is change in uh, what is the total change in the fluid property now at a given particular location and with respect to time what is the change in uh, property and this one with respect to change in point uh, location when the point, uh, fluid element is moving from one location to another location what is the change in the property so that is given by this equation thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates